now, when you, when you look like the letter P, then you probably done too much, you know? When you're shaped like a potato, and then you got the sprouts coming out on the bottom, that's a little too much. Beauty standards are ever changing, but over the last few years, all the attention has gone, for the most part at least, to one area of the body, the ass. Obviously, not everyone is born with the Kim Kardashian booty. Enter the Brazilian butt lift, probably the most popular plastic surgery right now. One doctor in particular has become synonymous with the procedure and is, well, at this point, famous for documenting the entire process on social media. Which one would you say is the most popular? The Brazilian butt lift. Right now, it's the most popular surgery as far as like increasing demand year over year. And it has been for the last 10 years. Yeah, in layman's terms, can you kind of just explain that and like what sure, exactly? Sure, sure, like it's where I take fat from the areas of the body you don't want it, like your love handles, your arms. Like you know? here? Well, yeah, like there, yeah, not you. You, you would not be a good candidate for No, okay, like, but, but you would take it from here. Yeah, but most people have a little something extra on their love handles, you take it from there, um, and then I take the fat out, I isolate it, put antibiotics into it, inject it into the booty and sculpt it. So it does two things. It makes the waist more narrow, the hips wider, a little more projection from the side, um, and I can make it big, small, athletic looking, heart shaped, a shelf so you can like put a drink on it. I mean, there's a lot of different variations, you know, within reason that I can do. BBLs, Brazilian butt lifts, we're talking like 50%, 100% year over year demand not just in the US, but all over the world. What do you think is the reason for that? Oh, the culture is driving it, for sure. It used to be just that like Kim Kardashian could get this, right? right? But now it's like, because of Kim Kardashian, everybody, everybody yeah. can get yeah. it and wants to get it. Can you yeah. kind of speak to that a bit? Yeah, I mean, right, I, I agree. I think every, in, in the past, you have to be on like a Kim Kardashian mm -hmm. level or a Paris Hilton level, you know, like famous, rich, you know, you kind of snuck in the back door, had breast down surgery, whatever, because, it wasn't as accessible. Now, because of Kim Kardashian, I think everybody wants, can get plastic surgery and look kind of like her if they can. For sure. Also, I, again, this is just my opinion. I feel like it used to be something that, you know, was kind of people didn't want to speak didn't about, about it that it. much. Right. They didn't right. want someone to know they got right. it done. Right. So, uh, so I can tell you in my own practice. So like from 2002 to about 2010, if a patient of mine saw me walking down the street, they would like cross over so that there'd be no like awkward moment where, where friends would know that I did plastic surgery on them. But now it's the opposite. And like I said, it's a worldwide phenomenon. And I think it's just part of our modern world, you know? Not everyone can get an appointment with Dr. Miami though, whose waiting list is two years long, let alone afford the expensive procedure. As the demand for bigger butts has increased, some people are bypassing the plastic surgery route for quicker, cheaper, and more dangerous alternatives. This sometimes includes getting silicone illegally injected from unlicensed providers. This method is much cheaper, sometimes for as low as a couple hundred bucks, compared to the $10,000 Dr. Miami charges and requires a shorter recovery period. The procedure is so risky that in recent years there have been multiple accounts of women dying after getting these illegal injections. Yeah, every week we see people come in that have had, you know, silicone injected into their butt or some other unknown substance someplace else. It's a real problem. Dr. Miami doesn't treat the patients who come in with illegal injections. Instead, he refers them to doctors like Tan Sarmir, who is one of the few plastic surgeons in the country who specializes in reconstruction of botched jobs and the removal of illegal butt injections. What we do here is we help the women uh, and men uh, who've had illegal silicone shots or injections um, in a black market underground sort of way who took the easy way to plump their buttocks. But over time, it's inevitable that they're going to have problems, significant health problems, either local or systemic, where they get very ill. And in medical school and in residency, there's no training on this. So a lot of doctors don't know how to remove it or well, they can't put two and two together to see that these silicone injections are causing problems not only in the butt but all over the body. 
So the, the illegal way for doing this occurs in something called a pumping or a plumping party. This is all black market stuff, it's word of mouth. Somebody who had the procedure done tells their friend and uh, then usually some out-of-towner comes to town. They usually go on a tour of the United States or other countries and they meet up in hotels or somebody's house and then it's a legit back alley procedure not done by doctors, um, not supervised, not legal, not FDA approved and people go there and they get an injection or two of some foreign material that they don't know what it is but it's almost always silicone. Do you attribute this uh, yearn for plumper butts to anything? Do you think it's a product of celebrities or social oh, 100%. media? 100%. Yeah, it's totally from social media, celebrities, singers, actresses, and uh, that's it. That's the thing. It's the in thing these days. Um, but yeah, there have been uh, you know singers and influencers like I think uh, uh, Cardi B. Uh, I think she spoke about uh, having these injections. Where's Patty? What do you think about like fake butts? Because it's such a huge trend. Oh, I got one. Is yours real? It's like 75% real. So how, like what is it, like injections or? Yeah, the pressure of getting a big butt in New York is really big right now to the point that girls are getting it in illegal places where you're not supposed to get. And people who earlier in their career uh, got them and now they're accomplished and stuff. Um, and But uh, whether or not this made them get accomplished, I don't think so. Uh, but you would hope that people who've had it done will speak out and you know warn people who haven't had it done who are thinking about getting it done that uh, it's not a good idea. And then same question for the back alley silicone injections. Why do you think people are so willing to do it if the risk is so high? Because they've had friends um, who've had it done without problems yet. And number two, when uh, when somebody wants something, <laughs> nothing's going to stop them. Tammy Roman is a model and reality TV personality on the show Basketball Wives who got butt injections several years ago. Since then, she's become a rare public voice to not only admit that she got it done, but also speak candidly about how she now regrets it. For me, it was my ass. Like, I didn't really have an ass to begin with, but what was there was going dripping below that butt crease line and so I felt like I needed a little something to just lift it up. Now, um, it wasn't it wasn't easy to do because it was painful. You know, injections hurt, you know. So for me, you know, getting all those little shots all the time was painful. And then once I got it, being somebody who hadn't had an ass to begin with, I, I felt like I did too much. I was like, oh my God, what have I done? You know, your clothes fit differently, you know, and I went through all of that and regretted it in the beginning. What was your initial reaction? You come up off the table, the next few days or whenever you get to take that garment off and you see yourself, positive, negative, what do you feel? I hated it. I hated it. I was like, what have I done? Why did I do this to myself? First of all, you gotta sleep on your stomach for three days and that ain't how I sleep. So I was miserable, you know, through the night. Um, and it was painful, like it hurt. You couldn't drive, you know, I couldn't drive because you're not supposed to sit on it because that will flatten it back to, so why did you get the procedure done in the first place moment. Um, but I took the garment off and I looked in the mirror and I was like, I have messed myself up. This is entirely too much for my shape, my frame, you know? And so I was miserable for, for at least maybe four or five months after the procedure. I hated that I had gotten it done. You know, I think people are really, it, it, it has come around to a time where with social media, and I hate to keep making everything about social media, but it really is. People are seeing, you know, you a year ago versus you now, so they know something has been done. So you, it behooves you to be more open about whatever it is. I, I do feel strongly that right now we're approaching a time where women are like, what happened to the natural bodies? What happened to the real sisters? What happened to the, you know, the real women, the cellulite, the stretch marks? Where are those girls at? Because everybody is paying for perfection. I think that in a hundred years, people and machines are gonna kind of merge to some degree. We'll be kind of all bionic. And I also predict that like your great, great grandkids will not look like you. What will they look like? Whatever they want to. 
Damn, that's real.